Hey everybody, it's Mates FC here. Um, I am Dave Chase and I am what Tina Turner once uh, referred to as her private dancer. Joined next to me tonight in a hat is... Uh, Kieran, our player manager for the Mates FC Sunday team and also a coach for Mates FC. Who Tina Turner once described as simply the best. And this bearded fellow on the end... I've got to think of Tina Turner somewhere. Yeah, I know. I don't know if you've got three in your locker. Who oh, Tina Turner once described as Nutbush City Limits. <laughs> proud Mary, I think that's what you call Oh, me. that's you. Yeah, you are Proud Mary. Proud Mary. Uh, yes, yeah, so I'm Curtis. Um, I am captain of the Sunday League team. Brilliant stuff. And for anyone that hasn't watched us before, I'm sorry about us just in general. Um, Mates of C is a slightly different football team to other football teams. We have um, Thursday kickabout sessions like training uh, where we do fitness drills and then we also have Saturday games where anyone can put their name down and turn up. What we don't want is commitment which is why we're different because we want people who are struggling with their mental health or want to improve the positive mental health to not have the pressure on them about going into a traditional team. Just come to us whenever you fancy it if on the morning you don't feel up to it, don't come. It's no problem. We just want you there when you're ready and we'll be there ready for you. Um, right. So as well as the Thursdays and the sun, uh, Saturdays, we also started a Sunday league team. And we are going to wang on about that a little bit tonight. Uh, we'll be talking about that mainly. But we want to hear from you, three people watching at the moment. Um, we would like to hear your memories of cup finals um, because again, cup finals are always brilliant. Grassroot cup finals are just even better. Uh, you can't make stories up that we well, that you've all experienced at these these things. So uh, if you just put uh, underneath this broadcast, just put under there any stories or any comments, and uh, we'll read through those as long as they are not too offensive. Right, Sunday league. So. We've done a podcast a couple of weeks where we sort of recapped on what's been going on this season. And uh, our little stat man here, um, as scat man John once referred to it now, um, that's a different thing, here and here, has kept stats on the whole season. Do you two just want to run through where this season took us? Yeah. Yeah. Um... So, yeah, we sort of covered it in the last podcast, but just to sort of recap everything quickly, um, put the Sunday League team together this season. It's our first season um, and we have blown ourselves away. No one expected how well we've done and we have, I don't think we could have done much better, to be honest. And that's not being egotistical. We are literally no. shocked as well. We want, the plan was to put together a football, a Sunday League team that gives our Saturday players um, somewhere else to move on to uh, last season. And that was it. That was the plan. We delivered that and then we delivered a little bit more. Yeah. So this weekend, uh, we wrapped up the season. Uh, the league is now finished. We do have one more uh, Charity Cup run uh, semi-final, which is still in the works for when we are playing it. But this weekend, we finished the season with a 1-0 win. Not our best performance, but that means we have top Division 5. We've won the league, uh, played 16, won 15, drawn 1. Um, <laughs> just that stat itself in the league was insane. And as an additional, we also won Division 5 League Cup. Well, I've lost a ribbon already. we <laughs> tied around someone in my basement. <laughs> So, yeah, that was the, the Division 5 League Cup there, which I believe our last podcast was the week of the Cup final. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, yeah, um, and Curtis, you know, you're our captain for a reason because you are the adult and uh, <laughs> you've been through a, f a fair few Cup finals in your time. Uh, do you want to just run through your experience of uh, our one? Yeah, oh, the hell of a day. Um, I think the whole experience from start to finish um, was just excellent. And I think for us as a group of guys that, as you say, we've come down to play 
fairly occasionally on a Saturday and then it built into a Sunday. Um, to be able to do that and to do that together um, was memorable, to say the least. And to come away with a win, um, that should put the cherry on the cake, really, because either way, it would have been a brilliant day out. I think we, um, the way in which we kind of merged that amateur side of what we do and the bringing the professional thing is almost always referred to it as being like a bit of a professional amateur where you don't have to play like you don't have to act and play like an amateur in order to play amateur football but you can definitely bring the nice bits into it and i feel like that's what we do really really well um the way in which uh, the football fitness guys warmed us up um and you know the whole kind of process step by step from the moment we're on the coach through into the changing room leading towards the the kickoff um there was just a huge buzz in there and i think we all knew why we were there we all wanted to be there and we all wanted to come away with the with the result and i think that's a real driver as to why we came away and um the result which was um fairly lopsided um it's probably a bit unfortunate how lopsided it was because i don't think it reflected the game i'm gonna get to that yeah we'll get to that fine we'll come back to that one but in general the um the want to win it as a group i think probably drove us beyond um beyond our football ability and uh, we really showed, showed it was us. like you'd all just gone mad like in the nicest possible <laughs> way like i was watching we were really glad in the nicest possible way that lewis didn't get that goal when he walked on there where's that come from you know we know everyone's levels we know everyone's brilliance we know what people are capable of and normally it's about come on we know you've got a little bit more in there you can squeeze that out of you what happened that day was the opposite it was all like hang on where have you all had this where have you all had this hiding and like i said at the time i'm glad lewis didn't get that goal because if he just walked on the pitch done what he done and that had gone in that would have just been ridiculous like yeah it would have just it's just mad and yeah. every one of you just it was like someone had changed your batteries basically it's a common phrase when you watch a game of football that doesn't really mean anything and people say oh calm down it's not a cup final and that's what that's why it's because on a cup final you find another level you, you yeah. know, really do go out and, and give it your all um it was either that or those um energy pouches that you gave us yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. We'll have to we'll have to try again. Well, actually, no, we had some of those the other day, so we'll have to look at uh, Kieran's stats about who had one of those yeah, yeah. some of those <laughs> matches and uh, how that affected their game. But um, <clears throat> as you say, the score didn't really reflect um, how well um, East Haddingfield played as well because we they're a new team and. We've got we've been fortunate to meet a lot of new teams this season and we've got great respect for a lot of these new teams. And what got me when we first played East Hanningfield was it was really old school. They were in the middle of the village, in their home pitch, and it was probably the only game we'd seen for a lot of these where we actually had um, what got what is that? <laughs> Sorry, that, that was me. Clicking on Facebook to see. Uh, okay. and that was I thought it was the voices. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and it was probably the only the, one of the, the first games or only games that we've actually seen a fair crowd like turn up over a park on a Sunday in rubbish weather. But you could just see from the turnout they had there, there was something different about that team in that it was a proper nice village team where the whole community cared about it. And, you know, straight away, the people that run their team they're brilliant everyone's been really nice they were a great team and when they started playing in that first game it was like oh hang on young people lots more energy um and they they held themselves constantly and we've played them a few times now and playing in this final it was a good atmosphere because like there wasn't you know abuse there wasn't anything like that there was funny it was a happy funny atmosphere of you know just chanting and we know that they're a nice team and we know that they're nice lads and we know that they're nice people and i think that made a big difference as well because you know it was you could be in that happy atmosphere 
it was a nice relaxed happy atmosphere i say relaxed uh, everyone lost their voice and we got a little comment there from club secretary matt smith do 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 we've got kieran do every single player um got some sort of uh, chant about them that day we had an accidental one about harold shipman uh where someone misheard curtis lipman's surname <laughs> <laughs> Someone, someone I missed that. Curtis's surname, and I said Lippman. He's like, uh, "There's only one Curtis Shipman." I was like, "No, it's not Shipman. It's definitely not him." Um, so we, we nipped that one in the bud and uh, created a different one for you, which I think fitted a little bit, a little bit better. Um, yeah, but yeah, it's just a lovely atmosphere, and it sounds like really twee to say about another team, but they are nice lads, and like we played them the week after as well. And what was the score there? I was yeah, and, and that it, every match has been fair. I know it sounds silly saying, you know, the seven is you know not necessarily fair, but they played. They you know we were they absolutely held their own, and the score does not reflect what a, what a good team they are. Um, yeah, so uh, no, all good luck to them. They're brilliant. They've held themselves brilliantly over the whole season. There's been no back chat to the refs from them. There's no trouble like that. Um, the refs, the linos, everyone has been, been brilliant in that final. You know, that was a young ref taking that final. And he done he done brilliantly. Um, yeah, it's just been an honour to, yeah, to be involved, really. But, uh, yeah, so what are your highlights of the day? Highlights of the day. Um, oh, Fifth of April, twenty twenty-two. <laughs> <laughs> so, what you referring to? Cup final or today? Yeah. Cup final day. Um, highlight was, I think. Actually, Highlights. Yeah. So, on the pitch, I've got to say, Jack scoring within forty-five seconds made things very like quite relaxed we were yeah, we <laughs> i think there was um i think that's that's what comes with a big day isn't it you get the hype and you have the all the emotion that comes with it um all the all the emotion that comes with it for in my head it was like you was all like let out of you know when they have a greyhound race and they open the cages yeah that's how you started and yeah that's like, how you it was... continued. <laughs> It could have gone one or two ways. If we'd have done that and not scored for the first 10 minutes, we would have been really on edge because it gets to the point where, okay, we've now thrown everything here and it's not um, going anywhere. But the fact that we scored really early, that was definitely setting us up to move forward. Um, but outside of that, I think the, the coach home was obviously good fun, having, having all the nerves behind us. Um, but then also... Um, that put it even pulling up to the, the gardeners first thing in the morning, seeing everyone in their mates gear, ready to get on the coach. It felt like a really big deal, and that's what an awesome thing to be a part of. It's uh, like a special school trip, like we was going to France for a holiday. Yeah, literally, my girlfriend dropped me off, and it felt very school trip like. Yeah, the croissant yeah. and an orangina, and you were yeah. set for the day. <laughs> did yeah. you ever have a French break time at school? We did. We used to have to pay like three pounds and we'd have uh, a croissant on an orangina and we'd have to speak french for 15 minutes and did it stick no <laughs> <laughs> um, got a few comments there um yeah <coughs> one is just a hands up from mates fc which doesn't mm -hmm. really say much um can you see the comments yeah yeah so that's really cut down chiming in do you read some that, Kurt? Yeah, so yeah. Hi, Mum. Um, ah. <laughs> yeah, no, they were so I had my clan down. My uh my family have always been very good at kind of uh coming to the football and things like that. And uh, cheerleading. Cheerleading, absolutely, uh, for me and my brother. But the well, uh, the ones in the Moulin Rouge dresses. That's the one, the yeah, doing, doing the high kicks. Um but they uh <laughs> but no, they were well impressed with kind of the general standard as well and i think everybody came away saying the, the same thing that we've just said there that actually it was a great game of football that the school yeah. was effective of and actually what you go off and do is actually really good <laughs> you're not just a couple of old men kicking a ball around in yeah, a i mean we're getting there but uh yeah that's uh yeah i've somehow found myself in the older lot 
But uh, no, you are right. There is a bit of a standard there, which is. So I've got Mark. As long as Mark's there, we're all right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, Mark's setting that bench as long as we're all younger than him still. <laughs> We've got uh, Oliver Glazebrook. Does anyone know who he is? Mm, haven't heard of him. Um, I think he's done a couple of goals, didn't he? Right. Uh, he's asked the question best moment outside of the final? That's a good question. Uh, he, he, he's come back with one that is uh personally he was a big fan of kurt missing from three yards on sunday i did miss from three yards i think i don't might... know what happened this sunday it was like there was a magnetic field around the goal mm -hmm. and the ball had the magnet in it and it was just any time the ball went near the goal it just went miles away <laughs> i actually think ollie if you count my headers i missed from three yards about four times uh there you go. So it if was... you had those yards of half <laughs> that was a goal it was just one of those days and it very unusual um i wonder if last game of the season we've won the league won the cup whether or not there's a little bit of relaxing from you know from that perspective but there's no i would say from the side like watching from the side i would say there was a lot of people giving a lot of effort there was a lot of veins about to pop out of heads so it wasn't like we have seen some sluggish performances in the past. We were like, oh, why is everyone a little slower today? I wouldn't say it was that. It was just, I think we've done enough. I think everyone's just done enough. That yeah. might have been it. That might have been Put it, it down yeah. to that. Yeah. Although I should have scored from three yards. Ollie, you're right. <laughs> now we've got Joey Hazelton there. Uh, just put a message up now. Joey played a lot for us on Saturday, plays a lot for us on Saturdays. However, he's been plagued with, as many people have, have, um, played with injuries and uh when he come to us he just had a big knee injury a uh, big knee operation and uh then went and walked how do you say it that true picture what's that place called which one Where? In, in peru in peru Machu Picchu. yeah i can't pronounce that <laughs> um yeah he, he six weeks after having an operation on his knee he went and did that and uh yeah, so he's always just been a little bit sort of still getting better. And then he just had a big operation on his foot. Um, so he came back and played for us two Saturdays ago, I think it was. And again, it was like a rebirth. I don't know, like, where he's had this extra time to actually rest. The skills are just flying out from everywhere. Um, Ollie Glazebrook says, the best header of the ball, Adam Whiteley, would have scored from there. Yeah, no, not many people know this actually, but we have the UK's best header of a ball. Um, yeah. that's, what he, that's what he tells us. Is it officially in writing as well? <laughs> yeah, I thought we put it in the group chat. I think that's what that means, doesn't it? <laughs> um, yeah, we've got to take a claim to something. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So, no, looking forward to him actually showing us how <laughs> what he can do with his feet as well. Uh, no, that would be good, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so. Uh, and you know this is the the nice atmosphere we've had and like what was it like um i'm saying this because uh i was there in the shouty bit was in was that in any way intimidating or did you really feel it was you had the crowd behind you i think from well Kurt will have a different opinion from the first half being on the bench and seeing how it was playing i mean the first half Hanningfield put up their fight although we got that early goal i think that must have knocked them a bit um but the first half sitting on the bench watching it it was a very very even game and from my perspective i think the chanting and everything from our corner must have had a little bit of an effect you've got the match nerves of a cup final and then you've got these group chanting and shouting from the sidelines and we're thinking or oh, maybe maybe dull, dull it down a little bit but second half well, yeah. there's that sort of cockiness that hang on if we if we don't do too well we should all go a bit quiet here <laughs> yeah <laughs> but second half i mean well, 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 this is why i'm saying kurt must, might have a different opinion but second half once i was on the pitch and i could hear that whilst i was playing it was brilliant that this constantly urging you on you want to do well you want to react. and that interaction of like you know, give us a wave just <laughs> we're in a cup final and it was like it was like something out of a comedy film just every, <laughs> and then connor doing these like forward and rock. Roly -polies. <laughs> and then was, there ended up being songs like 
someone <laughs> someone bought a dustbin over um at the ground and just said oh could you put your rubbish in there alan's gonna bring you a dustbin or something like that but then it was like alan's got a dustbin <laughs> it was just a song for everyone and everything someone walked past with an ikea bag and it's like well, no, there was off to ikea <laughs> Um, <laughs> there's a living in Greece, the musical. <laughs> yeah, that's what football chants tend to be. Um, they, yeah, just pick up on everything. Uh, but no, Kieran, I completely agree with you. It just carried us. There was one mm. point right at the end of the first half where um, we lost the, the ball came, came from a corner. We lost the ball, and I've chased him back for it, um, and I've managed to make a tackle. And I didn't get the ball completely first time round, but I heard the crowd chant off the back of it and I went and got it again and honestly it carries you through like, mm -hmm. like unbelievable more than um you think it would it really 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 does so um no not intimidated just just pumped really well we can't do it all the time um we uh, <laughs> I might start a choir and uh, a traveling band <laughs> yeah. oh get the old Vuva Zaylas out <laughs> <laughs> um yeah okay um yeah so anyone watching if you've got any memories of cup finals generally funny stories from cup finals um just let us know um yeah so um we've got another um we've got one more uh thing coming up uh we haven't got a date for it yet um and then what we're fortunate enough to be able to do at mates as well is with the Saturday players, we've got a, a new intake, if you like, of uh, we had quite a lot of new people join us on Thursdays uh, this side of Christmas. Um, you know when everyone's like, oh, I'm going to get fit now. Um, but me, he's just eaten these two dairy milks. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, uh, we've had a great big new turnout of people on Thursdays. That, that's gone through to the Saturdays as well. Um, but we've got the opportunity there that if any of the Sunday players want to come have a kick around on the Saturdays as well, obviously we won't put them all in the same team, um, but we can do that. So, uh, yeah, we've got an opportunity there to keep playing as and, you know, dipping in, dipping out as and when you want. Um, and same with anyone else. If anyone wants to come in, it doesn't matter who you play for um, day to day. If you're in a Sunday team or anything like that and you want to, you know, just keep your positive mental health up by still getting out there and getting out in the sun when we have sun. Um, you're welcome to come over. Just uh, have a look at our events tab, find a date that suits you and put your name down. We are joined by the person that Tina Turner <laughs> once called. I can't um, evening, one, gentlemen. It's not butter. <laughs> uh, Andy Tallis, King of Welfare. Hello. Hi, you all right? How is everyone? Talk. Apologies for being so ridiculously late. The fact you exist is all we require. I've had a very busy day this, uh, this half term. Love it. <laughs> no uh, more said. Right, Andy, uh, what did you think of Cup Final Day? Give us your views. I loved it. Right. I loved it. <laughs> I loved it. I loved it from the minute I woke up. Um, I yeah, did, actually. You know it was like thought, a Christmas Eve sort of thing, a Christmas Day sort of thing. It was a little bit like that, yeah. I like, had a little wee because like, I was getting so excited. Then got up. Um, then, I changed my, <laughs> then I changed into my other tracksuit. Um, yeah, no, it was, uh, it was really good. I just think from start to finish, I think um, a big well done to you, Dave. Like the like organisation on the day, the coach, the whole sort of <clears throat> everyone in the track suits. Um, I think it just it, it made it such a such a great occasion. Yeah, I know nothing um, about football, but um, I do like a list. <laughs> yeah, you love a list, but, but how nice good. were the massive signs on the side of the coach? Oh uh, yeah, it did. It did look good. It was. Uh, I just, I, yeah, like I say, I just think from start to finish, I thought the boys were excellent. Like the way they conducted themselves like yeah. on the whole day was super no one beat anyone you know it was like to, to be fair the first half it was quite a sort of even game and then you know in the second half a couple more goals went in and heads dropped and then it kind of it didn't <clears throat> it didn't flatter with a, the score line you know the score line was deserved but i don't think the, you know the boys didn't take it as like 
I think we were gracious in victory is the way I want to put it. Yeah, look at that. Okay. It looks white there, but it was silver. Yeah, yeah no, that was a good old one. I think they turned up in a slightly bigger one, though, didn't they? <laughs> yeah, there's a double decker, but um, they also had writing on there, so I chose to have one with no writing on. Yeah. Yeah, to be fair, they... Don't match they, track suits. They sort of, yeah, everyone had matching... All us lot had matching track suits, and they coach with our badge on. I'll tell you what, they the, their one as well i'm just so glad they had a coach as well because uh, that was i wanted that to be a brilliant day for them as well they're going yeah, there at the cup fair, in their first season i think that was the um <coughs> that was the other thing as well they they're a great bunch of lads as well you know and uh, although we were sort of uh gracious in victory they were gracious in when was in, that um, in, in <laughs> when, when were we gracious in victory <laughs> I think we. I, th I think still we not, were. Like, we're I think, still wagging on about it. <laughs> yeah, but I think. I think like there's, there's you know there's we played teams haven't we that have beat us and like just like been really like, awful. Yeah. Off. And I just think it was really nice. Like the the uh, the other team, like a great bunch of lads, great manager and stuff. So it made it made the day even better. I think um, definitely. I, I loved all the songs. That was probably the highlight of uh, singing. I mean, yeah. people just make up nice the burgers there. <laughs> um, the burgers were good, which makes it good. The drink was good; it kept flowing. So, yeah, everything about it was excellent. And then, um, how good was it coming back to? So, our, our home pub is Gardeners in Springfield in Chelmsford, and we left there on our school trip, as Kurt said, like in the morning. Went off, waved to our mums, and went off, and then uh, came back with a cup. And ruined everyone's nice Sunday afternoon. <laughs> in the sitting there having a nice chat after their roast dinners. And we just came in like someone had just let a herd of elephants in. Um, but uh, yeah, brilliant food, brilliant prices, brilliant drinks. Check out the gardeners. It is, yes, yeah, just brilliant. The, the other thing that was good was like, um, you know, like the, where it was played, like Haybury Swift's great facility, like afterwards, the bar and. Like we joke about the food and everything but it was like just a great it was a great sort of place to yeah, have it on or as well like it you know the pitch is excellent now because obviously being 3g um oh you know, beautiful pitch wasn't it um yeah and it was uh it was good the, the only sort of one little tiny thing is they need a gate up the other end because me clambering over the fence wasn't <laughs> and to everyone else's amusement was great but uh why are you climbing over a fence because uh, you have to walk right down the other end to get off the pitch. <laughs> <laughs> you should have said, I would have, uh, you know, like in that Kevin, what was that Robin Hood film where he sat in a big salad spoon and flicked him over a wall? I yeah, could have done that. Yeah. It, like, and flicked you over obviously, Yeah, so, uh, no, it was good. It was uh, a great day out, and I think the, um, the guys deserved it after such a great season as well. Um, you know they've, they've done an excellent job as we talked about before um just the way they've conducted themselves and and uh yeah it was just nice to it was topped off with a final and then even better with a cup to, to bring home on the coach so uh yeah good day very fond memory now um <clears throat> Yeah, so Thursdays, as I say, we've got a load of new people have been coming, and that's been brilliant. Starting up a nice new regular lot for Saturdays, seeing that develop, and I've been trying to just keep it in house um, over the next few weeks, just to get everyone to gel a little bit. And very shortly, we did mention a little while ago we've been, uh, which is just amazing, we've been selected to be part of um, a, a team called Caring United. Uh, which is CALM, the country's um, leading um, suicide prevention charity, who we're part of their football collective already, um, using football to help, um, yeah, improve people's mental health. And um, and Carlin, um, which is beer. And um, so both are good. But, um, yeah, we just had a little bit of an update from that. We've got our kit. Um, they've given us a new kit for Caring United, um, so it's Mace FC Caring United. And at the moment, the plan is once a month, the new Saturday team that we're developing at the moment um, will have regular games under the Caring United, or Mace FC sponsored by Caring United, 
um, logo. And we've got a couple of filming days coming up. So I've got to go off to Hackney Marshes to uh, film something there. I don't know what it'll be. Hopefully I don't have to kick a ball or anything. Um, cause that would be brilliant if you do. No, they'll strip everything off of us if they make me kick that a ball. With that tennis ball is magical. I gave you an opportunity to play football with me and what happened? I kicked yeah. you a, I kicked a lovely tennis ball at you like a dog and you just nearly made me die from laughing. <clears throat> um, yeah. And then, uh, we've got coming down to film our actual team and, uh, that will be something that will go onto their website and will be part of the story of Caring United, um, which will be going across the country. Um, it's going to be about 10, 15 teams in total. And once we know when those teams have been selected and where they are, we'll see what we can do and join up with them. But it's about teams that do something a little bit more in the community. And it's going to be a great way of getting our face out there and opening ourselves up to get more people to come to us and that sounds big-headed uh, getting our face out there more because it's not you know i don't mean it, it's not about us it's about if more people know about us we can help more people as simple as that so i'll happily be center spread of a football over my genitals in the essex chronicle uh doing whatever i can to get our name out there um, although that might make people go away from us i didn't know we were doing a calendar we can, like you, you can have, uh, you can have a poem, like Madonna. Uh, that'd be good. That spear thing that Kieran had the other day. What, the poles? Yeah, you could have one of them. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is the sort of thing that if we happen to win some form of silverware next year, this is, I feel like... It could happen. As, as, a, as a team, I would like you to say... the cup. Uh, I would... I will put the whole squad forward for a some form of calendar. Yeah, I've just exactly. had a load. Of, I've just had a load of balls delivered, and what we could do is like Andy and I could be in like a ball pit, but of footballs. <laughs> <laughs> like um, what's the, yeah. the American Rose? The the field yeah. Of cover where, yeah. Or we could do that in little discs or um. Bits. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so in, they don't have baths anymore you're not allowed baths are you but you could have like done one in the bath afterwards that could Very be well. like that could be yeah. December. old school the whole team in the bath we could wrap ourselves in nets like we've been caught like with tuna that's been caught <laughs> <laughs> oh dear oh, Kieran, Kieran, Kieran love the hat tonight thank you I like the way the hair bit at the front. Yeah, it's fringed. Um, I, I need a haircut. That's why I've got the hat on. Oh, oh, yeah. It looks like I've got an afro. <laughs> wrong with that? It all folds out the front. <laughs> oh, we've got uh, Simon Green there. He's a uh, little message there. Evening chaps bit, uh, from Billy, the always secret name. Um, and uh, Long Dog Silver. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Ollie, oh, oh, question there from Ollie Glazebrook. What were your highlights other than the final? This includes you, David. Uh, so my highlights, I don't know if Kieran's got them to hand, but do you have the stats of how many goals Ollie scored this season? I can get them up. You give me a few minutes. Not, just sound confident and make them up. Um, <laughs> um, oh, did you can't can't get it up. Someone say something quickly. I'll come back to that one. <laughs> Uh, we've got a message there from Andrew Keneally, who's uh, Captain Keneally from Saturdays. Uh, we really need a clear distinction between myself and Andy Tallis, as in saying Andy and Andrew. That's why I always call him Andrew, because I feel like if I say Andy, it means Andy. Yeah. It's like me, I don't answer to David. If this You don't want to, mate. Yeah, you can't call me Andrew, because the only person who calls me that is my mum when I'm in trouble. Yeah. If I'm working in court, I need to be called David, but if I'm not, I... I don't David. know. David? I once had someone, um, I was at a meeting and they went, we're just waiting for one more person. I was like, oh, who's that? And they said, David Chase. I was like, I'm here. She went, you're Dave Chase. I was like, yes. Surely not. The same person. <laughs> um, and uh, that's one of our other apprentices, uh, Kieran. Uh, it, was, it, it wasn't someone that was uh, of Kieran's ilk as an apprentice. But uh, yeah, I was like, that's not. Someone doesn't 
call a baby, Dave? My mum did that. I had a Saturday job once, and the boss the boss rang up and said, uh, "Oh, is uh, Andy there?" And my mum said, "No, I'm really." This is when you had a phone in the hall, no mobile. Um, and uh, she said, "No, sorry, there's no one by that name he lives here." And he went, "I'm really sorry. He's given me the wrong number." And then he rang back again, and she was like, "Hello." And he went, "Oh, I think I just spoke to you. Uh, I really have got the wrong number. Sorry." Third time he went, "Can I read the number out to you?" And she was like, "Yeah, of course you can." And she went, "Well, that's that number, but no one." Oh, hang on a minute. Do you mean Andrew? <laughs> oh, totally mortified. I got into work that week. I had an Andrew badge waiting for me. And uh, yeah. That can be arranged for Thursday. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely ruined, I was. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Kieran, what do you know? Yes, we've got the stats. Uh, Ollie has scored 35 goals, nine Shut assists up. in 24 games. Wow, it's not bad. It's not a bad record. Imagine how many he could have scored if he'd been as good a finisher as Chris. I oh, know, he'd be on 90. <laughs> yeah. Chris is magic, isn't he? That? He's unbelievable. Even looking at Ollie's comment there, he missed the first time, but he got it in the second one. Yeah. Seriously, though, Ollie is someone in our team that you have to. Um, how, how do you put this? You have to. Mm, <laughs> you have to sort of. Uh, I don't want to say. You couldn't <laughs> sit there and just listen to him because it would really wind you up because he's like having a mad dog running around constantly, right? But he's brilliant. And it's really annoying to have to <laughs> acknowledge, like when you see him go out there and just whack these balls in, it's like, oh, well, not him again. Like, it's, he's, as he, you know, even though we're outside, how's he going to get his head like through the bush on the way home with that? He must have such a big ego from like this man. But he's just brilliant. He, he's just brilliant. And I was, I was on before the cup final when I was getting <laughs> stats together as if we wanted anything to talk about. And I, I was sending them through, like, here you go, to the manager's chat. And everyone went, we don't need to build his ego just before the final, leave him. <laughs> and, and that's the thing. It's, like, and, and, and in no way, it's not like he's not, he hasn't got an ego uh, or he hasn't got confidence or anything like that. He's just a happy, lovely lad. And it is just like, oh, no, he's not, he's not, how's he got that many goals? How's he done that? As, you know, he doesn't need build enough anymore. He's just, brilliant than he knows <laughs> you know actually i jokes aside because we do give him stick this is what i mean that's that's it that's exactly it he is actually his the the record itself it doesn't really speak for his contribution either to to the team and i think as a when he's on the pitch you know he's going to score a goal and as a sunday player and kieran you might be able to resonate I, there's not many teams you play for where that's just you just okay that's a goal it's like it's yeah. When it comes at the start of the game or comes at the end of the game, or you know, it, it, there's always a goal there, and that as a yeah. on the pitch having that capability um, to be able to just rely on it, and as a defender as well to be able to say, I know for a fact that if we don't let any goals in, he's going to score one and we're going to win the game. Yeah, that is it's invaluable. Um, even on the pitch as well, he's you know he gels everyone together. Um, in their in their mutual hate of it, <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it chills everyone together because he is just like having a, a lovely, friendly dog there. I I um I, I'm not sure. I'm sure that is a compliment in there somewhere. I um I just I, I think what you know the, the thing is with the team is when you've got somebody who's going to score that many goals in a Sunday league team, if you've got somebody at the other end who can stop the ball going in it's the perfect key and you've got that you've got you know across the whole pitch you've got some really great players um but you've got the most the, the hardest positions to fill are finishers and stop people that stop the ball going in the net and you've got ross at one end doing that week in week out and at the other end you've got ollie knocking them in it's perfect the rest of it sort of speaks for itself i'm not taking anything away from any of the other players but, but that's the thing. They're the hardest bits to get in a football team, and you've you, got both. 
you can go through that team and you can look at the people out there and mark you know mark atkinson is a steam train he's just constant he's just you know we've got them and then you watch ryan like ryan eaton the ball comes to him and this sounds really weird but it's just beautiful what he can do with it yeah that sounds silly but it's everyone has got such brilliant qualities um yeah and it just works perfectly um Okie dokie, right. Sorry, Dave, just for something else that's like I find really rare for a Sunday team is that we can have four injuries, two people not turning up, someone on holiday, and still field an 11 that's going to win a game. Yeah. yeah. It's just, you know, those, if you, Andy, I completely agree with what you were saying, having someone at each end that can do the job, but also that depth. Um, and I think that brings it back round to the, organization and the commitment and the reason why we're all here is and it it breeds such a positive result on the pitch which in turn keeps people coming there's we've got this really nice perpetual motion going um so it everything goes really hand in hand um and i think we've got a recipe for a team that could do very well in Diff four next year and uh, you know in the manager's chat room i can honestly say yes there's people that by having them out with injury, it's like, oh, bloody hell, that's a bad one to lose. But there's absolutely never been a conversation of, if he's not playing, what are we going to do? It, it Because there is that... Um, not for anyone? No. Not, not even one person that, not you know, anyone. they're out for a prolonged period of time? No, no, no. Um, uh, <laughs> no, no. no um, no, actually, with yourself, it was morale, to be honest. Mm -hmm. It was the, a big concern with you was you come into this um, pulling a new team together as a captain, which is why you're chosen to do that. And you absolutely um, delivered that with, without foul. And then to get injured so early into the season that was a concern absolutely as a concern about your injury without foul but what you were doing to glue the team together um yeah that was a worry um but you still got down there with your with your boot wrapped up in uh <laughs> and ran the line <laughs> yeah like i can't try it i can't get in there i'm not allowed to be out in the rain uh but i'm there i'm going to be there if i want a hospital bed i'm going to be there <laughs> <clears throat> no i, yeah. I think well, I, you know, you, I really appreciate what you're saying and the, the concerns are there, actually. You've got enough leaders in that team. The nice thing about being a captain of that side is actually the responsibility is fairly minimal because you don't have to drag everybody because everyone's there. They've got work. They're well motivated. They're there for good reasons. You know, Dave, the work that you do and is a, is a lot of that reason. That's a massive motivator in the first place. Um but, you know, for Andre to be able to come in and have a captain of that calibre as well is, um, you know, it's just was just awesome. And, and everyone out. respects each other, which is rare. That's it. There genuinely hasn't been. And in a group of that many men, generally, there's always going to be like, oh, 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 I wish he hadn't turned up today. We haven't had that. And we have well, I don't play. I haven't played for him. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we've got a lovely voodoo doll with you. You <laughs> wait till Halloween. <laughs> no it's the the lack of toxicity is 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 rare it's a one-off um i've got friends that i talk to about their teams and they're talking about they get getting the same problems where they're seeing seven people turn up at training and they're waiting for someone to turn up for five minutes before kickoff to make the 11. yeah the clicks in the teams that um are just that the, they can they can make or break a team if your clicks big enough to field an 11 then great but they can make or break a side and actually yeah and that's something we definitely didn't want no. full stop well it's definitely something we don't want in the saturday team or mm -hmm. thursdays because if you are someone with a mental health issue that means that you can't come out of the house you know one in four people have a mental health issue in any one year if you're someone that is trying to get through your day-to-day -day life and you don't even know if you can go and get petrol because of how low you feel um to then go and join in a new football team or football fitness, you know, a, foot, a session, something like that. To then go and do that and then not to be welcomed in 
and have a little group of people keeping themselves to themselves, all of that. Frank is someone who's brilliant on a Thursday that after maybe the second time he was there, he's helping the people in the next session. And that's, that is great. We look around on a Thursday and be like, oh, well, I didn't need to tell that person where the toilet is or whatever, because someone else is already doing it. Someone else is already helping. And we've been so fortunate to have that. And that really makes a difference. But I wouldn't want to go into a meeting where I don't know everyone else. And, I, you know, they're all right. So we don't want people to have to be in that situation in their social life. And unfortunately, with football teams, that often is the case. And it is often something that makes people not want to join a football team. Yeah. For sure. For sure. All right, Ollie. Uh, there's a question there from Ollie, and uh, Curtis can take that one. <laughs> yeah. So, how excited are we to see the return um, of the Ginger Gerard, also known as Reese Looney? Uh, how does he play? Well, <laughs> he, so this season. It's, let's it's, just it's, recap. It. So, what we've had yeah. as a story, if you like, is. Um, Mates FC, we started in October 2019. Uh, we put teams out for um, a five-a-side tournament. Off the back of that, we then planned what we can do with the Saturdays and the Thursdays. Lockdown happened in that March. Actually, the weekend we were supposed to launch. Uh, couldn't really do much. Second lockdown sort of stopped a little bit. We started getting out there, doing the Thursday sessions. By the August, we could do the full match and we started that we managed to get about 10 games in before the next lockdown happened and then april the 3rd 2021 we came out of hibernation having not done anything whatsoever and everyone could just suddenly play football all together as a team that we couldn't before lockdown so that was really weird um and it just worked really well from there but um in doing so we wanted to make sure we could do everything we can of every opportunity to play football. We wanted to facilitate it to make sure people could get out and do something. In doing so, it then meant we didn't stop at the season end, which we're not this year either for the Saturdays or Thursdays. And we played all the way through. And as we were making the Sunday team during that time, the Sunday team pretty much started their evolution from about April had more people join, blah, 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 blah. Finalised it all in about August, end of July, August. Went live at the beginning of September. No break. Straight into it, loads of injuries. Ridiculous amount of injuries. Uh, two of the managers, three of the managers have been out on long-term injury. Two are currently still out on long-term injury. Um, and hopefully we should see them return in the next few weeks, uh, getting out there and taking it easy. Um, but, yeah, just can't underestimate how how many injuries we've had and how people have bounced back. But, yeah, one of those, Reese, uh, he absolutely, all of the managers have taken like a duck to water to this and have worked brilliantly together. And Reese is a teacher and um, we don't yeah, that, against him. that <laughs> has been really useful. No, it's been useful that he's, he's kept that, you'll laugh at the worst but you know he's he's kept it cool and calm uh because and he's captain using... from the sidelines like must try harder yeah yeah it was it was in week one where he asked us to put our finger on our lips and cross our legs so he took a little bit of getting into it yeah, but that's what he made you his... like, <laughs> no one mentioned the word toilet otherwise they'd all want to go yeah <laughs> um and then when he mentioned put your chairs up at the end of the uh, yeah session i've uh, got a question there from adam whiteley what is everyone's favorite goal of the season my favorite goal of the season is the one that lewis didn't score but i still love it and it was it's so it was so good that even though it didn't happen mm. it was brilliant so what was it oh, Pierce's Pierce's goal was good. do you remember pierce's goal i remember Pierce's oh, goal. Goal. <laughs> That was, I didn't think that would ever resurface. <laughs> uh, what, like you should watch it if you haven't seen it. That's excellent. But uh, goals this season, best goal this season. It's got to be one of bigs, isn't it? Like it's like it's finishing like something yeah. else. If we're talking Saturdays as well, 
there's actually only one contender, and I think Andrew's asked the question. I think Andrew gets the prize. Uh, as well. Yeah, he scored against Viloma, a forty-yard screamer, and it was one of those that you hit it and it stayed hit. And it yeah. I need to ask them about their video because he wanted to see that. Yeah, and if you're going to do it, do it in front of the camera. Absolutely, that was yeah. a great finish. Um, I think that would probably take it for the for the Saturdays for me. Um, Sunday. Oh, just on that subject, sorry, with mm -hmm. Andrew, Andrew, let's call him Andrew, Andrew, with Captain Keneally. Um, he's someone that came to the Thursday sessions, um, regular at the Saturdays. In, you know, we've never formally asked him to turn up, no. never formally, sort of like said, Well, we need you to be involved. He's just naturally. The right person to um help other people and he's been brilliant all season doing that he's firmly embedded within our ambassador team uh, we've got him and ollie running some games for us uh, alongside me and kieran um once a month just to give them more involvement because they deserve more involvement um that's been brilliant and very glad to have him on board I'm going to destroy that film of his goal, though. Ollie's, Ollie's <coughs> put Chris Bignall only scores penalties unless Danny Chip is demanded to take them. <laughs> so that, that's in reference to Sunday. So we uh, we won one nil, and it was a penalty. Um, and Danny has run over, grabbed the ball that hadn't scored all year, and Chris being Chris has uh, let him take it. Um, but uh, much to the disgust of the majority of the team there today. Well, the I mean, at, at, at four five nil, anyway, I, I would have given it to have, let Ross have the penalty. But uh, nil, what, nil. I, what I would say is that there was an instruction that we there was a specific person we wanted to take that penalty, mm -hmm. and uh, that person was too nice to to mark. <laughs> scored. He scored. Um, yeah, the, the second he scored, the other person scored. We instantly changed our mind, and he was the right person to take that. <laughs> Anyone that scores a penalty is the right yeah. person to take it. So, <laughs> Especially all, on that day, we just all need all. anything. Had a had a dog walked past and kicked a ball in the gut, we would have had that as well. Um, yeah. yeah. Going back to favourite goals, um, very recently, Connor Mitchell's free kick against East Hanningfield in the week after the Cup. That was as top bins as it can get. I know it's a set piece, so, but set pieces, even still, that was yeah, nice. phenomenal. But Connor as well, uh, you know, we've got, we will have end, end of season awards um, at the end of the season. Um, but um, Connor has just been, I get to football fitness. Um, obviously, I don't do it, but... Um, I get to football fitness about half seven most weeks and that's when we're there to sort of set up for the eight o'clock kickoff. Connor's there before us every single week. Connor's there helping set up every single week. Connor does both sessions pretty much every single week. Connor is just there constantly and the effort he's made um, all season is just robust is what i'm gonna say robust reliable and a man they're my words for him no he's brilliant just comes on puts in 100 percent constantly um how, how hard he runs for everything as well he'll he will constantly put in that effort and as you say it, that's not just on the pitch that's in everything and have you ever heard one complimentary thing said by him about him no he just puts himself down every single time he's yeah we need to boost that ego let's create a monster yeah with ollie yeah just get with ollie for a couple of weeks he'll be fine <laughs> kevin kevin gate has come on and uh hi kevin he's put um that goal versus um um uh, was a screamer. Uh, our keeper had no chance. Mm. Uh, uh, they've been, they've been uh, brilliant people to play against again. We, I know we've said this a lot. Yeah, they've been brilliant. We've met some 
really good teams, really good groups of lads. Um, they've got a charity. Uh, Kevin, do you know the details of your race night? If you put that in the chat, we can advertise that. They've got a charity night coming up shortly. Oh, brilliant. Um, we can uh, put that out on our socials as well. Yeah, great bunch of lads out. So that's Andrew's goal again, got a second vote. Yeah. In the lead with two. I'm sure I'm, I'm, I'm sure Ollie's got one in mind. If he yeah, he must have. Ollie Ollie wouldn't have like mentioned oh, to be fair, I think it was Oh, it, oh was, Adam. it was Adam. It was Adam yeah. who brought it up. Yeah, so Ollie, Adam, if you've got any in mind. Yeah, Adam, what is your uh, what is yours? Let's see what that is. Andrew wanted us to mention that one. <clears throat> so some other bits we've got coming up. So we've got an in-house against ourselves on Saturday, and that's to give all of our new people, we're taking it slowly, uh, just having to kick around against it. And it's just been a good laugh the last few weeks, and we've actually had nice weather. I think it's supposed to rain this weekend, but um, I'll see if I can change that. But, um, yeah, we've had some really nice sunny days, freezing cold, really nice sunny days. Um, and then Saturday, we haven't really put much out about it at the moment because most of the places are full already. But um, later this week, we'll be putting some details out about five-a-side um, tournament. Um, we want eight teams. We've got spaces for eight teams. We do these throughout the year. We've got one this Easter Saturday, so that's the 16th. Then we've got one in July, one in September, one in October. And what we want is we want to keep that kicking up, you know, ticking over of other local teams coming and having a kick around with us and just having a laugh, you know, take that pressure off of the full game. And let's just have a laugh. We've got the pitch for four hours. Let's just get out there and have a laugh. So, yeah, we'll put uh, some details about that. If you go on our events page, it is on there. And if you just put your name down, uh, we'll contact you about whether you want to set up a team and put a team in we want eight teams that can have up to eight people in them um does a winning team get an egg i will lay an egg for anyone uh, <laughs> for the right money um, <laughs> uh, what we'll do whoever wins will get to witness um a reverse birth from me and andy Talis here God. and i will will be recreating his birth but backwards um I'll be playing the part of his mother. Don't uh, all sign up at once. If that's not <laughs> something to come and see, I don't know what is. Um, <laughs> is that going on the calendar for next year as well? <laughs> yes, that's uh, the Christmas photo. Ollie put uh, Citra goal where and number nine cleared the ball and then run the length of the pitch in the last minute to score. I think he's our number nine. I think he's referring to himself. I was going oh. to say, I don't recall oh. anyone um, remembering anyone else's numbers. No. I, the goalie. I think this was, this was actually quite a pivotal moment of the season. If I, if you're talking about the first game rather than the second Citra game, because at this point, we were Citra were unbeaten as well. And we went into this game um, thinking that this was going to be our first real test. And I think that Yeah, they were a taste... Well, well, it was one all team to start it was, with. It was one all for a big chunk of the game. Um, and I think the period of time that Ollie's referring to where his goal went in, we, we turned turned the tide and scored three quite late and we won four one. Um and that yeah, that was that was a bit of a tasty game, got a little bit a little bit heated at times, but um from that point I think our season skyrocket skyrocketed. So Yes, Ollie, that was a good goal for more reason than one. So, well, and I think just the way you speak, uh, that explains what I was trying to explain earlier. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's like if your child went and shat at your nan's house, but you're like, oh, but they are my child. Yeah. And yeah. I am proud. He doesn't really want to see this week. Andrew, do this. Andrew's just commented to say, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Oliver Glaze book show. He was welcome on, uh, Ollie was welcome on tonight. He was, yeah. he couldn't make it, um, but he was welcome on. Um, so also there was the second goal that I think Ollie did yeah. in the final, which Kieran can comment on apparently. Yeah, so um, second, it, it, yeah, second goal, I was it, perfect alignment behind him for this. Um, and as soon as the ball he, ball left his foot, it, I could see it was going in. 
Um, it was, you can say it was a simple goal because it was just a simple pass around the keeper, but the alignment I have and the view of it that I had from the pitch, it was it was amazing feeling, especially in the final as well, knowing that you've got another goal. That, that, was, that was a good. That was good. <laughs> I, had a, I had a similar situation with Michael Ball's goal, which was a lovely mm. hit. It was on the half volley, and same right behind the ball, you saw it swerve away from the keeper. And I think that yeah. was a second goal as well. So that was after Jack put uh, his in. Uh, Baller's goal really kind of set us off, and uh, that was a great finish as well. As soon as you say yeah. anyone's names, you know what I was saying earlier about everyone's got their own quality. It's just a pleasure to watch Mike out there. He's just a machine, mm. and just the speed and now he's not injured and you know everyone's just such quality there, wow. there's, a, there's a lot of ability around um sickening isn't it yeah a lot of experience as well <laughs> the uh i think the other highlight was uh when on oh, that for cup final was when martin came around to tell everyone to put their rubbish in the bin yeah yeah planted, put your rubbish in the bin at him and then his mate who'd gone and got the bin came round and I said, where have you been? And went, what? And I said, no, where you really been? Oh. <laughs> I got another comment from Ollie there. To be fair, I'm a big fan of all of Jack Marshall's bullet headers. Jack yeah. Marshall. He's done, a machine, I think. He done the Manchester Marathon on Sunday. He's a machine. Um, yeah, just. I man. don't think I've, I don't think this season when I've come over and watched you guys, I don't think I've seen him miss a tackle. His timing is something else. He literally, like every time, he just, like, I look at him and think he's going to get this. Straight away, he just nicks the ball. He's like timing. Sometimes he goes clattering in and you think, oh my God, and then he stands up with the ball and you're just like, oh, yeah, that's great. But his timing is something else. He's basically all like the Avengers. Him. Just all the Avengers together, which is why I'm trying to dress you all a bit futuristic. <laughs> no, Jack, Jack's a proper pleasure to play alongside. He's just he's just so solid. Uh, and he drinks gravy. Drinks gravy. Doesn't own anything. Boy, love gravy. Northern drinks gravy. Absolute lad. Yeah, brilliant. He would turn up to training and talk about the nineteen mile run that he just did before for his for his training. Unbelievable. Although I think his words were after doing the marathon, never again. So, but you know what? You've done it. You don't have to. Yeah. Have Unbelievable. To. Well, the nearest, uh, uh, sorry to tar Kieran with the same brush as me, but uh, we've walked marathon distances, haven't we, for charity, yeah. um, for calm and not together, but that's enough, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Especially but, when you get to the 20 mile mark, which is supposed to be, and you've still got two miles to go. <laughs> yeah. And they definitely lie. Like we, the one I, one of the ones I did for Calm was uh, from Greenwich down to the Oval along the Thames, and then back down the other side. And coming back down the other side, it was sitting down on the ten mile mark to have some sweets because they gave you sweets. Um, so I sat there, um, <clears throat> standing up again. I was like, no, I, I don't want to do this now. I want to get a taxi. And the person I was walking with had uh, hurt their leg up a mountain and I was like oh should we get a taxi if you can't walk you know I don't mind giving up and like just if, if we have to do it because you can't walk properly it's like no no we'll do it and I'm like bastard um mm -hmm. but every time I stepped up or down a curb I was like oh my god um let an own drive it uh, running it that would just be ridiculous mm -hmm. um yeah. yeah I did I did, um, I did for charity I did the Jurassic Coast walk oh nice it was 40k and um and I just went, they went, oh, do you want to do it? And I was like, yeah, yeah, thinking it would be like, they oh, went, I said, what is it? They went, it's a coastal walk. I thought, yeah, I've walked down South End and down the pier and back before. <laughs> like, I'm up for that. Anyway, literally, day one, I was in bits. I got. I, I was going up these stairs and I was like counting them. And then this bloke stopped me and went, can I have your bag and that? And I was like, yeah. And I was like, this is weird. And he started talking to me, going, look at all the boats. And I was like, Oh, yeah, all right, mate. I'm just trying to get up this hill. And then that evening he went, I saw you. You're about to pass. <laughs> you're about to pass out. So I stopped you and I, I tried to distract you to get your breath back. Like to get, He said, I saw you were in the zone of getting up there, but you weren't thinking about how you were actually feeling. He said you had a jacket on, your rucksack on. But he said, I just thought, I'm, I'm not carrying him up this hill. So I'm going <laughs> to stop him. 
<laughs> it's so, uh, but yeah, like that yeah, run yeah. for 26 miles. I mean, I struggle running down to the White Bear if I know that it's getting near close time. I'm That's like, my nickname. That's his nickname for me. Yeah. <laughs> when we wear a little leather strap, a little leather straps here. Um, yeah, and then uh, then you get like. So the marathons just that's crazy like how people could do that full stop but then <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, so one of my friends that live with me he uh he does like ultra marathons and one day he went out about five in the morning and he come back and he's all knackered it's like what do you do he's like i've done 60k it's like <laughs> what and i worked it out it's like that could get you could get to heathrow from here and Jesus i was like Christ. where did you go and he goes because well, she was at mersey weren't you go, oh yeah we just ran around mersey for the whole day as long as we could and done 60 cats. Like, what sort of life is that? But and then you get them people that are like, I've done a marathon every day for a year or a month. Yeah. Or, that, Eddie is like, yeah. did he do a marathon a day or something? Yeah, he did a month of marathons, I think, or something like that. No. But like, don't get me wrong, everyone's got different fitness. But sometimes I look at people like Kieran, Kieran's very thin. And I think, where are your lungs? Like, where are your organs? Like have you these people that are doing these runs have they got different organs like how can no matter how muscly you are or whatever, how can you do this how can you you must have a different engine to everyone else like mm. yeah I think you inadvertently nailed it there every the some people have literally just built differently to yeah. be able to do this sort of thing i'm definitely built differently yeah no uh, you were you were exactly who i had in mind Andy. <laughs> so last week, Andy and I, I think it might have been us. I was standing with another plump fellow last week on a Thursday. Um, it may not have been Andy, but it normally is. And uh, we were just looking at someone who was very thin and just thinking, like, so are our organs the same size as theirs? <laughs> like they were the same height as us, but really not obese. And I was like looking, thinking, so have they got the same size little lungs or? Have we got little lungs that fit inside their rib, like how the in it's inside their rib cage? Is that what we've got, and we're just covered in fat, or have we got slightly bigger ones? Like how I don't know. I'm fairly sure lungs tend to be the same size outside of people that work on their. So I could have tiny mouse lungs in me, potentially. Yeah. Right. Okay, let's cut me open and find out. <laughs> Yeah. The, only, the only thing i the only thing i think is i'm getting value for money with clothes because my t-shirt was the same same price as this i do often think that like <laughs> i got a lot more fabric i got, I got we have to pay more to eat don't we because we eat more <laughs> mine's, uh, mine's glandular but there's no no gym membership so that's a plus as well <laughs> we may I've got, get, I've got to get back on it i'm running out of clothes you know when you get to that point where you think yeah i'm starting to run out of clothes and i lost i lost three stone about three years ago and uh, i was like right i'm never gonna put weight back on so i threw all my clothes out and now i'm like well i wish i had them <laughs> <laughs> you walk down the stairs and you just got a tit hanging out <laughs> well, and, um, I'm, the getting, getting, your shirt. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting the warm weather because getting my shorts out could be a treat oh they'll be all right with uh yeah, it's all right. We'll stick together, Andy. And if we just keep ordering bigger mate stuff, that's all right. <laughs> Nike, can we go up to double XL? And uh, we may need bigger. Um, that's all I'm going to say. We'll see how this summer goes. And I'm um, going to stop training because, like, just getting too big. Like, that's the thing. We're just so right. muscular. It's just our massive lungs we've got, isn't it? Um, Did you, you probably really you stretched yours at the scene. I was going to say, Matt Smith there. There's a comment there which is just for Ben, and that is it might be a comment to do with where I've dyed my head there. So no, it's, it's Ollie. Ollie's put uh, Kieran's hair oh, it's yes. been very dark this evening. Uh, have been using. Have you been using some of Ben's just for men? Mm. And then uh, Matt Smith put just for Ben. For Ben. <laughs> so Ben and I do share the same hair dye. Um, I de I dye him. Uh, I can confirm I haven't yet dyed Kieran. No, not I yet. Need, I need my beard doing. I don't know if you I'm can. You can use this. This is fine. I used to use that on Jared's beard. If I don't want it to look fake, like. Oh, I can't help you then. <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's my, daughter, my daughter called me Santa today, and I was like, that's out of order. Yeah, and I think <laughs> I've got to put hair dye on your face. It, I had to get glasses the other day, like a sign of old age, and uh, 
I came home and I thought, right, okay, got, got my new glasses. I walked in and my daughter was like, oh my God, what is what is going on there? You look like the granddad from Up. Made me feel great about myself. <laughs> I had a situation uh, about 18 months, no, no, a couple of years ago now, where, so my beard has got a slight reddish, very, very slight reddish tint. I've had to admit it now, but it is a very slight reddish tint. Um, and there was an ongoing joke kind of throughout the week between me and the people at work and I was telling my girlfriend about it and she was joining me in the idea that I've just got a full-on ginger beard. And I really, you know, was fighting this to the hill. And we were sitting in Liverpool Street Station after a night out. And a guy walked up dressed in completely fluorescent clothing, but he had his hair and beard dyed bright orange, like orange, <laughs> orange, orange, orange. And he was a little bit drunk and he came over and talking and he with the respect respect and he looked at me and went us gingers have got to stick together i was like <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> so i have to take it on the you've got color you know and you know i'd be glad of some color that didn't cost that didn't come out of a box yeah no I, yeah you can't buy this in a box but i think that's a good reason oh no stacy dooley does <laughs> right i've seen the adverts um yeah no mine's like a cycling helmet uh, just anyway on that note <laughs> right so as i said before this thursday football fitness club um foot fitness with a ball between your feet most of the time um that is six pounds for an hour and it is eight till nine o'clock on thursday at chelmer park if you're interested put a message underneath or uh check out their facebook or instagram page and message uh after that there is nine till ten o'clock mates sc uh thursday training um if you have a look on the events on mates fc's facebook page which is what you're on now have a look on there at the events tab and you'll see the session all the details are in there put your name down on there if you want to come to that or if you've got any questions just message or message under this if you want then on every saturday we have an in-house game at the moment uh that's in the events tab and if you'd like to put a team in for the five aside tournament on the easter weekend which is the 16th um put your name down there if you haven't got a team that you fancy playing still put your name down and we're going to pull some teams together and top some teams up with uh people from there as well but uh you've got a good few teams but we will be putting that out there next week or the tail end of this week to get a couple more it doesn't have to be an established team be whatever you want it could be your mates at work it can be um your mum whatever um <laughs> right on that note anything from anyone else liverpool anyone? winning 2-1 in case you're interested what what liverpool winning 2-1 benfica Thank you. Just, uh, in case you're uh, interested, um, yeah. Um, I've just, I've just checked. I'm not interested. Uh, Aaron, <laughs> uh, no, just a comment. Uh, I think we mentioned it last podcast that this will be available shortly, within the next few days, on the Mates FC TV YouTube channel, which we've not yet promoted or done anything with. But Kieran has painstakingly downloaded every podcast we did. Uh, we've done so far and it was i thought we'd done like 20 but we've done a hell there's, of a lot there's quite a few on there i think we may be in the 30s it was maybe really? in the lockdown last wow. year wasn't it? but uh yeah so uh, that kept us off the streets but um so we've got mates of ctv and if we can get hold of any videos of people scoring we'll put them on there yeah that'd be great i want to see this andrew goal because you know i don't think it can be better than pierce's well, that's uh, long gone now, isn't it? You got to do it. If you ask Pierce, I'm sure he can still dig it out on uh, YouTube somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, one last thing. Thoughts on the World Cup draw? Ooh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think it, I think it's good. It's just when you look at the how it could play out. Potentially, we could get. <laughs> Brazil and Argentina. I think yeah. it. I can't see any problem there. That's wrong. Right. <laughs> yeah, if you're gonna win the World Cup. We've got to beat all the best teams. You know. Yeah, no, yeah. That's that's the thing. That's what worries me. The the group's nice. I think it will give us a bit. Of, should give us a bit of confidence. We should win at least two out of three, if not all of them. Um, so, 
for a little bit of advice about uh from a supporter's point of view have we got a new england kit coming or is it still the current one that they've just been playing in i'm not sure actually i'm sure they're bringing i know i've seen a new kit but i don't know if that's like one of those uh prototype type things you were like a white kit didn't they where it was all completely white yeah uh, um, i haven't seen any updates since then but i'm sure they will do a world cup kit of course they will mm -hmm. cash in okay yeah uh late summer early autumn of 2022 it's uh mm. set to release apparently lovely just me to know when i'm uh, jumping on the bandwagon so. i think it'll be great i think it'll be uh you know apart from anything else hopefully without trying to be too confident we'll get through quite a few rounds maybe and uh, okay. i think a lot of barbecues and drinks we've lost that you know what we had in the summer we actually had confidence that each of the players could play football brilliantly rather than a few stars yeah i just i just hope that we don't ruin it again like with the press and everything because we love to you know it's like the harry yeah. Maguire thing like that booing harry Maguire. what whatever you think of him and he you know it's not like he plays for tottenham like he shouldn't you shouldn't be doing that like to an england player if you've gone to watch an england game don't understand why you would boo an england player don't get it i don't get that mentality this is a personal my personal view but since like since he's been in the england squad we've 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 over exceeded like what we thought where we'd get to and he's been a, a massive part of that and yes his form has dipped for club but but i don't i don't get it i don't understand why you would go and that's the mentality that always ruins us because you look at other countries they get behind their team no matter what and and like it seems like we as fans as as press as everyone looks for that 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 bit and it's it, it's really I, I don't know I, I don't really agree with it but yeah uh, that's, that's what i was sort of touching on it, it's we had something at the we come away at the end of the summer well the beginning of the summer with you know what for the first time in our lives we've got a team that we can trust the manager the manager knows what he's got behind the scenes that we don't know what he's got and everything he's done has been oh well, you don't want to do that don't, oh no actually you do that where'd you get him from and we ended that knowing that hang on if they're this good now think about what they're going to be by the time it comes to the world cup yeah and now in these ga games between then and now We've gone back to the old mentality of oh no it's shit it's shit it was not shit they're not shit <laughs> try and get back to how we were in the summer for the world cup anyway i think it, um, will, it will come good it's tournament time isn't it and it's everyone knows that tournament time is different to any other time you could lose every game running up to tournament and go and win it or vice versa yeah. so we've seen um england got uh, was it 20 2014 2012 won those euros where we or didn't make the 2014 euro i don't think the 2010 euros were or what was it the world cup we finished bottom of the group costa rica topped it yeah it's tournament yeah. football anything can happen but i think the one thing that it does do is it um I think back to the last couple of tournaments it's just created such a camaraderie isn't it around uh, oh, I love it. yeah the summer was, was different that was different and we're so spoiled because we're going straight into a world cup on the back of yeah brilliant yeah right um last comment there from ollie which ties in with some terrible news i've got so ollie glazebrook there i agree andy booing players is as bad as singing i think he means pizza hut 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 um pizza hut chelma village is shut down and it's turned into itsu noodles yeah it's been right. there since it was built we've got no sit down pizza huts in chelmsford anymore that doesn't have the same ring to it either as uh pizza hut 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 does it no. <laughs> It's zoo, zoo, zoo. It's zoo, zoo, zoo. Might be for Kieran Do. Yeah. It's a change my surname. Do, 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 do. <laughs> I tell you what, if my girl sing that in the car once more. I was going to say, have you had it? Have you still had it this week? Yeah, yeah, they love it. Kieran well, at least the sort of thing about them dead fish that I got them to sing about that time. Yeah, it was better than that. <laughs> Weird, that wasn't it? very weird roly-poly okay i wasn't calling you roly-poly <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> no, goodbye. Good night. Bye. Bye, guys. See you later.